Welcome to I Write Summer Camp TV. I'm Melissa Williams Murphy, and this is my writing buddy, I the Guy, who also happens to be the mascot at the I Write organization. And we believe that all kids are creative and have a story to share. Each week this summer, you're gonna go on a creative adventure with us as we learn how to create characters and stories from professional authors and illustrators. Some of them are even kids. All you need is a pencil and some paper. Now, if you need extra activities to do throughout the week after camp, be sure to visit our website at www.iwrite.org. We have all kinds of creative writing and illustration activities that you can download. So I have a guy, what are we gonna learn today? Awesome, so let's get started. But before we do, let's have all the kids at home meet kids just like them who have become published authors at iWrite. Hi, the guy. Today we are learning all about genre and story themes. Both are so important in stories. So let's first learn a little bit more about genres from I Write published author Ishan Mani. It's me again, Ishan. Today we're going to be talking about the different genres in fiction. So a genre is a fancy, originally French word for type or category. So the different genres of fiction are the different types or categories of fictional writing. If you're a big reader, writer, or even a movie lover, you'll definitely come across these at some point. There are six different fictional genres, which do overlap at some points. They are action adventure, fantasy, science fiction, historical fiction, realistic fiction, and mysteries. So let's go through each one in a little bit more detail. All right, first, if you've ever read a comic from somewhere like Marvel or DC, you've most likely already read something from the genre of action adventure. Most stories under this genre involve the main character, yeah, like you, Super Eye, <laughs> fighting for or defending a place, idea, person, or group of people against a human or sometimes even monstrous villain. <laughs> but the most important thing about action adventure stories is that they need to keep the reader on the edge of their seats 24 seven. They really need to keep the reader engaged all the time. Fantasy stories are often set in a fictional, sometimes magical place, which is sometimes influenced by historical stories or myths. Books like Harry Potter are examples of fantasy stories. They go past reality or common sense. Many of the greatest fantasy writers create whole worlds of their own and the masters of fantasy writing know how to pull the reader out of their own heads and into the new world of the author. All right, third, science fiction is a type of fictional writing that uses concepts in established science, which is the science that we now know, or sometimes futuristic ideas to create a story. This genre is different from fantasy because while science fiction does have an imaginary storyline, it could happen at least according to science. You can identify a sci-fi story if it involves things like aliens, time travel, teleportation, or space. The best sci-fi writers do a lot of research. A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Langle is a great example of a sci-fi book. Historical fiction is a fictional story based on people or events that happened in history. This is my personal favorite genre to write, 
But I will say that historical fiction too requires research. After all, you need to be able to reproduce events that occurred in the past to some degree of accuracy. Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry is a great example of a historical novel. It's set in Denmark, which is a country in Northern Europe, during the Second World War. The fifth genre of fiction is realistic fiction. Most realistic fiction stories could actually have happened and are, well, realistic. Most realistic fiction stories don't go past common sense. Characters are normally human or animal, and the conflict facing them is something that really could happen. When you're trying to identify a realistic fiction book, think if what happened to the main character could happen to you at any point. This is a great starting point for writers. Now we come to the last genre of fiction. Ba-dum, ba-dum. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da Mysteries. <laughs> These stories are harder, but some of the most fun to write. These stories often involve a mysterious death or a crime committed, and revolve around a single or maybe two characters who are trying to solve the mystery. For example, a detective trying to piece together clues about a mysterious robbery is an example of a mystery story. The Nancy Drew Files are a great example of a mystery series. We just reviewed the six different fictional genres. So I hope you guys could take something away from this little video lesson. Best of luck in writing your stories and stay inspired. Thanks, Ishan. I was excited to see that he mentioned realistic fiction with animals. That's my favorite genre to write in. There's just something so entertaining about turning animals basically into people. Right, I the guy? All right, so now you're gonna to wanna to be thinking about what genre you want your story to be written in. And in the next video, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about something that's very, very important and all writers need to know. Once you decide on your story's genre, you will naturally prepare for the literary theme of your story. So let's say you decide to write in a genre like science fiction and you specifically wanna focus on outer space. So that means your research will be on space, your illustrations will be on space, everything. You may wanna write about the moon, Mars, aliens, stars, other galaxies. There's so much to consider. Then you're gonna to wanna to think about some good lessons that you could focus on in that type of story. Maybe the character discovers just how small each of us are in the world but we can play a big part to make it a better place. Even though we may be focusing on a theme like space in a sci-fi genre, story themes should really get the reader thinking on a deeper level. So let's take a look at some of the most popular themes found in stories and poems. One popular theme is finding courage. Also, themes about growing up and friendship, self-esteem, love, family, morals and values, trust, and finding happiness. Themes truly give us a reason for why we're writing the story and allow us to guide our character through growth and change so that ultimately our readers will also learn something through reading our story. And we too, as the writer, might learn something along the way as well. Writing poetry is a great way to practice writing different themes. Let's hear from I Write author Nia Shetty as she reads her poem, Joy and Me, and see if you can discover her theme. Hi, my name is Nia. I'm a fifth grader and I absolutely love to read and write. I want to share these poems with you because we need to continue to be happy and share our love during while we're in these hard times. Now my first poem is called Joy and Me. You might wonder, why'd she name it Joy and Me? Well, I named my poem Joy and Me because it's about how I emotionally connect with joy. Joy and Me by Nia Shetty. Joy, her glow overwhelms me. She's unstoppable when happy spirits fly through her. Joy and I can spend days walking on the beach, her telling me about every happy, funny moment in her life. Joy's past has been hard on her, but no one can tell. I don't have words to explain our connection. 
We're really close to each other, but we're also really far. Some people call me Joy, but I'm not her. I've been with Joy every single step of the way, but I'm not Joy. Joy knows who to trust because of me. I'm what makes Joy herself. Who am I, you ask? How do I know these details? I'm the center of Joy, her heart. Thank you for listening. Continue to share the love. Wow, by the guy, it amazes me how talented our young writers are. Nia's poem had so many layers to her theme. I wonder if you at home can find some of the deeper meaning and the theme in Nia's poem. Let's take a look. Let's find some words in Nia's poem that will give us a clue behind the theme. Now, first, the title joy definitely is a big clue. So let's put a little heart around that word. Glow overwhelms, happy spirits, funny moment. I think these are all clues to really show that happiness and the bright light inside someone is a big part to this first stanza. Let's take a look at this next stanza. Here, Nia really shows the realness of the character as she talks about how the past has been hard on Joy, but no one can tell, and she really starts to show this inner connection. On the bottom stanza, she goes further as to comparing herself to Joy, and that this person, this feeling, this connection has been with her every step of the way, and trust is a big piece in this next stanza. This could represent being true to yourself or trusting yourself. Now, on the last stanza, Nia does such a great job of tying it all together. When she says, who am I, you ask? You want to know how I know these details? I am the center of joy, her heart. Nia is showing the goodness inside the heart and soul of a person. What a beautiful message from such a beautiful young lady. What do you think the theme was, I the Guy? You know, we've been learning a lot about theme and genre, and I don't know about you, I the Guy, but I'm ready to write a story. Are you ready to hop into character? Nice space suit. Let's see what kind of character we'll create today. Time to start with an illustration. So let's go find illustrator Ryan Shaw. Illustrator Ryan Shaw back with you once again for another drawing lesson. And this time around, we're going to draw a Chihuahua astronaut. Yep, you heard it right. We're gonna draw this astronaut that happens to be a girl chihuahua so let's go ahead and get those uh, pencils and papers ready and let's get ready to draw okay so to start out as usual we're going to do a light circle shape and then i'm going to the body next i'm making it kind of a jelly bean shape and then i decided for the astronaut to make her kind of look like she's on a spacewalk Kind of like you know when you see the pictures of the astronauts floating around in space um, i decided to go with that so i did her arms and um, just a little bit of adjusting on that arm i didn't like how long it was so that's why it's so important to draw lightly at first and then you can kind of add your details as you go but just keep it light at first because that way if you have to erase like i just did you can erase it easily and it just comes right off the page so i added the the three fingers and the thumb. I'm making her more like a person. She's kind of upright. You know, she has hands and, you know, she's uh, on two legs like we are. So I'm going to have her head be a little bit bigger than her body just to make her more cartoony looking. And then outside of that, uh, I'm going to draw another bigger circle for the helmet shape. And I'm going to put the ears inside the helmet the nose, there goes the eyes, two circles, the little pupil dots. Add the eyelashes just to show it's a, it's a girl. And then I'm just adding the visor at the top for the helmet. 
and then the little knobs for the visor. And then I got her little, her little oxygen pack in the front with the tube that goes behind the, the tank that, you know, keeps, keeps you going in space there. Just adding little details here and there as I go. Um, I'm a huge space fan. I don't know about you guys, but I love uh, all things to do with space travel and planets and things like that. And uh, I was real excited to see, uh, not long ago, just a week or two ago, to see SpaceX and NASA team up to send astronauts back into space for the first time in 11 years. So I was really excited about that. And uh, now that I have all the details added here um, on the character, I'm gonna go ahead and just ink over it and add my lines that I wanna that I want to keep. So I'm using a brush tip pen. Um, you can use a marker or a regular pen or even just press harder with your pencil and then just erase the light stray lines you don't need. And that's all I'm doing here is just applying details. Um, I'm going back in and making the face, you know, look super cute. Giving her those chihuahua ears and the, then the helmet, you know, and the knobs. Just going over all my details, making them pop out. And this is one of the reasons why I love cartooning is, I've mentioned it before in other videos, is that you can take just about any kind of animal that's out there and bring them to life and make them do things that they normally can't do in real life. So with all these details added, um, we're just about to the end here. And I'm just going in and you know, just kind of adding the gloves and all those details. There's the notches for the gloves. And then I'm going back on the other arm and doing the same thing, adding the fingers there. She looks like she's just floating around in space and having tons of fun exploring. All right, so with the pack and then the, the hose and then the other pack in the front, we're just about done with our girl astronaut Chihuahua. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I know I did. And uh, stay tuned for the next lesson. And remember to draw every day, write every day, and stay creative. Until next time, take care. All right, everyone, let's get up and stretch and move around so we can get the blood flowing. I right, the guys, show them how to do it. Let's move those arms. Maybe in a circle, depends on what your flexibility is. Maybe pump them a little bit. Yeah, I the guy, do you think you can do some jumping jacks? All right, everybody, just move a little bit before we move on to the next lesson. Thanks, I the guy. Well, that was fun. Believe it or not, a lot of creative people get their best ideas when they're moving. I know I do. So during this next lesson, I encourage you to get on up, stand up, move around, and see if you feel even more creative. Now that we've got a character illustrated, let's take her and develop some more of her story. And you guessed it, we're going to make a character storyboard. And there's I the guy to help us out. So go ahead, take a piece of paper, turn it horizontally, kind of how you see it here on the screen and write character storyboard on the top. And then we're going to draw two horizontal lines just like this below. This board is gonna capture all kinds of information about our character, the genre, the theme, the problem, the solution, everything we need in a story. So we're going to draw seven columns so that we can separate it all out and try to make them as equally spaced out as you can. 
and we're gonna create this character together. So everything that you see written on the screen, you're gonna wanna copy down in your own brainstorming notebook as well. So we'll give you a few more seconds to copy this down. And just remember, if you're making seven columns, that means there's actually six vertical lines. Now at the top of this far left column, we're gonna write these words, genre, character type, name, and setting. We'll be filling those out here shortly. In the second column, write age, gender, and personality. In the third column, we'll write special skill, and then below that, desire slash goals. In the fourth column, biggest fear and weakness. The next column, we're gonna do their best friend or a sidekick. Our sixth column will have the word problem. And the last column, the word solution. And then we're also going to write theme. And then we describe that as the deeper meaning and the lesson that the character will learn. So go ahead and put these titles at the top of each of your columns so you'll know what kind of information and details we're gonna capture here in just a moment. Let's keep going with our theme of outer space. So that means our genre here is actually gonna be science fiction. And I like to keep everything nice and organized. So I'm gonna draw a line underneath. And then our character type. Well, Ryan Shaw already illustrated that cute little Chihuahua astronaut. So let's use her. And I'm gonna put a line under there and we're gonna need to give her a name. Let's go with a more of an action adventure type science fiction. So let's call her Space Dog. And the setting of the story, let's just have it be set in outer space. That makes sense. Moving on to the next column, let's have her be 12 years old and she's a female, and a little bit about her personality. Well, how about let's make her independent. She is a chihuahua, so maybe a little hyper excitable, and let's go ahead and say that she's loud. Now, all story heroes, otherwise known as the main character, they have to have something that makes them unique. So let's think about what her special skill could be. What if she loves science and she's always coming up with new inventions and we should probably just make her the smartest dog in the class. And if she has an inner desire or a goal, something that she really strives to do, I think it would make sense for us to have her want to travel somewhere cool, like the largest planet, Jupiter. I mean, this is science fiction, so anything goes here. But remember what Ishan said, we still have to do our research when writing science fiction. So I would probably look up Jupiter and see what kind of problems she might encounter when traveling there. Because it's fiction, we can make it really exciting and use our imagination, but we also wanna make sure that the reader can follow what we're trying to describe and it all makes sense. Plus, since it's fiction, we wanna make it interesting. So maybe she discovers or invents something that allows dogs to actually live on Jupiter. Once you research why humans and animals don't live on Jupiter, that may give you an idea for what kind of invention she needs to come up with. All right, now as special as our character, our hero can be, we also have to make sure that they're relatable and they're not too perfect. So let's go ahead and talk about her biggest fear and her weakness. For her biggest fear, let's say that she's afraid of small spaces. Hmm, that could be interesting if she has to be in a spaceship. And for her weakness, well, we already know that she's hyper and excitable. So her weakness could be that maybe she has bad anxiety. And sometimes it's so bad her whole body shakes and she's not able to do certain things. Now for a secondary character. 
Secondary characters are so important to the story and specifically to the hero because they truly help the hero change by the end. Depending on the type of secondary character, maybe they help them or they guide them or they challenge them. So for a best friend, let's go ahead and cross out the word sidekick and do something a little bit different. Let's give her a mentor character. This character could probably benefit from a friend who is older and wiser and is there to give advice, especially if she's trying to come up with new inventions to get to Jupiter. So let's make our mentor character a schnauzer named Wiser. Now these last two columns, I would love for you to fill out on your own, but I'm going to guide you through what you're gonna wanna include in the problem column and in the solution theme column. When creating the character's problem, you're gonna wanna think about maybe something that could go wrong on her trip to Jupiter. Now, when coming up with the problem, you wanna make sure that you develop it and you spend time coming up with ideas that could maybe lead to even bigger problems because you don't wanna solve it too fast. That means the story is gonna be over. But don't forget about some of the internal problems that we've already developed for this character. We know that she has anxiety and she's afraid of small spaces. So be sure to find a way to put that into the story's problem as well. Also think about who she might meet along the way and how that might present another problem. Maybe there's a villain in the story. Now, whatever you decide the solution should be, be thinking about the, the deeper meaning, the theme of your story as well. What is she gonna learn in the end? What is she gonna learn about herself? And ultimately, how is she gonna change to become an even better character by the end of the story? So go ahead, spend some time developing your character even more, doing research on outer space and Jupiter, and coming up with a really strong problem and solution so that the end of your story has a special meaning. I know you're gonna come up with something great. As always, we had a blast creating characters and stories with you. If you need more fun writing and illustration activities to do throughout the week, be sure to visit us online at www.iwrite.org. We'll see you next week. Bye.